We're here this afternoon with Michelle Chenet, who has just written The Boreal Gourmet on Northern Canadian Food. And it's like no Northern cookbook I've ever seen before, Michelle. No muskrat, no bear. <laughs> Not so far. And an hour and a half ago, this table was covered in books and food, and it's bear. It is bear. So, Michelle, what makes your book on Northern cooking so different? Um, I think what part of what makes it so different is the um, is the whole experimentation uh, piece. Um, the book really focuses on uh, on northern ingredients and on uh, really exploring different ways of treating northern ingredients and uh, and mixing them up with um, international recipes to create something entirely um, new. Really, before you were in the Yukon, you were in Greece. I was in Greece, while. yeah. And yeah. that that note shows up in your book yes. as well. Yes, it there's does. a moose moussaka. That's right. Yeah, yeah. There's a moose moussaka and there's a moose um, uh, a Middle Eastern moose stew with uh, dried fruits and spinach and spices like coriander and cardamom and, and cinnamon. And there is also um, the, a moose ribs recipe with espresso stout, which is what we sampled here which we today. Vacuumed up very quickly. Is it all gone? It's it's excellent. Oh good. <laughs> it, was, it was really wonderful. Unlike the moose that I've cooked, which was pretty disgusting. Moose is challenging. Moose is challenging, especially um, some of the uh, the tougher cuts. And uh, ribs are are great if they're if they're cooked. I think really grazing is the way to go. Um, and the, the recipe in uh, in the Royal Gourmet. Uh, uses espresso, espresso stout as the only braising with it. There's no, uh, there's no stock of any kind in there, and it just works. I, I think the coffee really um, does the trick. And I think maybe it also has to do with whether the person knows how to treat the meat once they've shot it. Yes, so that's huge. The whole field dressing and cooling, cooling down of the of the meat right afterwards, and then taking the skin off very quickly. You really want to either have uh, uh, done it yourself or know and trust the hunter who, who treated it immediately afterwards. The meat I had was off. Was it tough? Yeah. yeah. Sometimes you find like bits of hair. And <laughs> Not really what you want, but <laughs> and I was it's amazed. all part of the experience. I was amazed by the number of ingredients that, that you had in your recipe because a lot of other northern cookbooks are very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not many. No eggplant. Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think uh, one of the things about the North and, and uh, really Canada in general, but, but, but in the North at the moment, there's a real interest in, um, in food from across the, around the world and across the country. And people's tastes are, are becoming very sophisticated and people are very excited about um, trying something that they might have had in, in Vancouver or Toronto or Montreal and using a northern ingredient to substitute for, for something um, that they that, that might have been using beef or pork. Um, and I think that's another thing about the boreal gourmet is that it's, uh, it's really about foods that live in the boreal forest. And the boreal forest, of course, stretches across the country and, and around the globe. Um, so there are a number of ingredients in here that are also found in, in Newfoundland or Nova Scotia, um, northern Ontario, southern Ontario. Um, wild roses, for example, grow across the country. Spruce trees grow across the country. It was really fun driving around southern Ontario over the past few days because um, I noticed that the, that the spruce tips had just gone out of season. They were just they had just grown enough that uh, they were no longer really usable. But I knew that a week a week ago they would have been, and uh, all of my friends would have been picking the spruce tips. And those <laughs> spruce tip shortbreads were awfully good. Did you, like, did you like that, love that little tang yeah. of, of, uh, of boreal forest? <laughs> it also sounds as though microclimates are really important in northern mm -hmm. cooking and northern harvesting. Because, you know, you state that sometimes the spruce tips on the north side of the tree will still be usable after they're That's right. over on the south side of the tree. That's right, yeah. And sometimes uh, the spruce tips, actually this is what I'm hoping will be happening in the north right now because I didn't get enough this year. But sometimes when they're finished on the lower latitudes, altitudes, I mean, um, they, they'll still be emerging uh, higher up on the mountainsides. Yeah. 
Another thing that you mentioned was about um, gardening. Yes. And what are the challenges that you face? Well, the biggest challenge is the, is the very short, short growing season. Short but intense. Um, so it's, it's, it's a challenge that you will really only have probably two and a half months to, to grow uh, vegetables in. And, uh, but it's also very challenging because you have 18 or 20 hours of daylight in many parts of the territory. What are the crops that grow best? The sort of classic root vegetables, carrots, beets, turnips, potatoes, um, kale, all of the kales and chards, arugula, uh -huh. happily, is, uh, is, a, is a good uh, hardy um, plant that, that thrives in northern gardens. And lettuces, because I know they like yes. old Yeah, the let old lettuces do really well. well. Yeah, and cabbages. Yeah, and there, are, and there are a number of people who live in the north who have become uh, great uh, picklers and canners of, of vegetables. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much for and having me. Forward to eating more northern foods. That's great. Thank you. Thank you.